Hey guys, my name is Ali Al Karaguli. I am a systems engineer and a postdoctoral fellow at the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how engineers make decisions. In this case, we're going to use the context of an engineering project, a space project, a satellite uh, that we're trying to design. And more importantly, I'm going to show you how this type of skill set actually transfers beyond engineering and beyond managing a project, like more to your personal life or, or any type of decisions that you want to make in life. Because this is going to be about how to make data-based decisions, right? How do you make decisions based on data? Now, unless you're living under a rock, uh, you already know that we live in a physics-based world where there's actions that produce reactions. You may have heard of a guy named Isaac Newton came up with this concept that turns out to be pretty true, which is when you do something, something else tends to happen. So when uh, we tend to live in this reality where we're constantly doing things and based on what we do and, and th the doing is based on the decisions that we make, there are consequences and there are effects. So if you want to control the consequences and if you want to control the effects or the reactions that you get in your life or project or work, then you better make the right decisions. So this is what this video is all about. So if you make the right decisions in life, on average, repeatedly, uh, you're probably gonna have a really, really good life. Now again, this is gonna be a data-driven approach. Um, not every single decision you make in life should follow this approach. Uh, this is more for irreversible decisions. There are two kinds of decisions in life where some decisions are reversible, some are irreversible. It's a spectrum, it's not really a binary thing. And what I mean by that is some decisions that you make, such as, I don't know, what am I gonna eat today? Like that's kind of a very reversible decision. You eat something, you don't like it, I don't know, worst case, like you get food poisoning or something, like you survive, I don't know. Like it's, it's, not, it's not something that's gonna matter in five or 10 years, um, of course, unless the food kills you. But for example, if I'm trying to make a decision such as what am I gonna spend a million dollars like, like if, I'm, if I'm gonna, I don't know, build a rocket or build a satellite for millions of dollars, uh, which vendor am I gonna go with? Uh, what parts am I gonna get? What does the antenna look like? How do I launch this thing? These are all irreversible decisions. And it's actually something I really respect at NASA, and this is something that made me really want to work at NASA, is compared to other places, uh, NASA, especially NASA JPL, uh, really knows how to get things done well the very first time. Like if you've seen any of the uh, rovers uh, that have landed on Mars, just seeing the sequence and the choreography of how these rovers and landers make it to Mars is just crazy. Like so many, so much thought has, has been put into these decisions and how these rovers and landers are being placed on something like the surface of Mars or any other planet or any other moon uh, of that nature. So without further ado, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started, talk about here. So what you see over here is a table and this table is a, is a, is a very, very simple concept that is used in engineering. Uh, it's called a trait study. Or you may have also seen something called a decision matrix. Uh, it's basically just kind of listing the options that we have and seeing what the variables involved are. And then based on these variables, we assign scores and we run with it. But before I even talk to you about what the trait study or the decision matrix or, or this table even looks like, um, the very first step in making like big decisions in a project or in life or doing things of that nature is to identify your goal, right? And this uh, mistake I see 99% of people in engineering uh, students, especially like make is, or, or just humans in general, is nowadays we live in a time where humans are very, very overwhelmed. It's very tough to make decisions. So um, very first step is ask yourself, what is the goal? What exactly are you trying to do? Now in our case, for example, we are trying to launch a uh, CubeSat or a satellite uh, that carries a uh, radio um, that is like, let's say above 100 gigahertz or 200 gigahertz, that's trying to demonstrate being able to showcase really high data rates. That is basically our goal. That's our North Star. And everything else stems from that. So the very first step is you want to get crystal, crystal clear on what your goal is, right? Uh, let's, again, for example, in NASA missions, what, what they really do in mission concepts is like they say, okay, uh, we think there is um, water underneath the frozen surface of this moon belonging to this planet. So then our goal is to go find out whether that is true or not. Okay, so then you find out, okay, what instruments are needed to detect that? Uh, how do we, can we can, what, what does the data look like? How do we store that data? How do we transmit that data back to Earth? Then all these decisions that you need to make stem from the very basic fact that you have identified your goal, right? So again, very first step thing that you want to do is to have your goal, which is your North Star. And once you go ahead and do that, then you can go ahead and define the variables. So for example, in this case, let's say we are trying to launch this CubeSat into the, the, the let's say, I don't know, International Space Station orbit, which is going to talk to some ground station on Earth to demonstrate some sort of high data rates. Well, then we gotta figure out, okay, how do we choose a vendor that helps us build the bus? For example, if we're gonna build the radio, which is the payload, 
Um, someone else is going to build the bus where we place our payload, or who knows, maybe we need, to, we need to build it ourselves, right? That's the decision we have to make. So what are the variables that are needed to make that decision? First, we identify them. So one that's always going to be present in the real world is cost. So in this case, you see we have cost. We have another one, which is payload volume, which is how much, how much size you have available for your volume, in this case, the radio. How much available power is going to be fed. Uh, and then, for example, in this case, we're trying to find a vendor. So one variable we're looking for is reliability. We're trying to see, OK, uh, how, the people who are promising that they can launch our radio into space, uh, how many satellites have they actually launched? And how many of them are successful? Um, and this is a, an example of like a very, very reliable vendor. Obviously, before that, we write some of the things that I have mentioned to you, which is like we identify our orbit, we identify what our payload looks like, we know what, what our goal is. And then once we go ahead and do that, then we can write down what are the options. So then we go on Google, and then we go and search around, say, OK, like if our goal is to find someone who is going to build uh, a satellite for us that we can equip our payload on top of, who are, what are the options? And this could like literally be as simple as a Google search of like, uh, I don't know, bus uh, provider, satellite bus provider, or satellite manufacturer. Or I don't know, in this case, let's say, I don't know, you're trying to build an antenna, antenna manufacturers, or what companies manufacture antennas. Like you just go in and search, and you just like create tabs upon tabs of all the different possibilities, and then you go and explore based on these criteria. Now, based on certain variables, in this case, we narrowed it down to, let's say, five different vendors or five different people. Then based on these variables that we set, we set bounds. So in this case, we have some criteria. Like for example, for cost, we assign a range, which is like our absolute minimum and our absolute maximum. For the payload volume that's able to be provided to us, we assign an absolute minimum and absolute maximum, and so on. And same goes with the available power, whatnot. Now, once we have done that, what we go ahead and do is once we go and contact every single one of these people, and we gain information about these numbers, we go ahead and assign the actual value. But then even uh, more sophisticated, what you can do is you can assign a scoring system. And these can be weighted or unweighted. What I mean by weighted is, for example, let's say you are very, very low on money. And money is like an extremely important variable to you. Then, and, and let's say you have a scoring system, which like, let's say 0 to 5. 0 means, nope, this thing really sucks. I don't want to go with it. 5 is like, hell yes, this definitely suits our budget. Uh, or in this case, let's say like 0 is like, I don't know, it's a million dollars, and five is 200K, which let's say, I don't know, that's like more compatible with our budget. Then you can assign a weight, which let's say, I don't know, in this case, we give this like an X3, meaning whatever number I give here is going to be three times as important versus the, all the other ones, like I'm going to assign like X1. Because let's say they are just not as important. Let's say I don't care about reliability at all, and I give it like an X1. That means if I have like a five here, a three, a two, and a one, this is actually going to become a 15, right? Because this specific option has the variable that I care about very much with the weight that I have. So then it's going to be 15 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. Now, if you're confused about the numbers, don't worry. It's not, we're not doing math here. But the whole idea is that if there are some variables that are more important to you than others, then you can go ahead and assign weight to them. Now, once you have assigned your weight, then you can go ahead and fill the scores, for example, Let's say, I don't know, like ar I'm going to arbitrarily fill them out. And then let's say, then you can go ahead and add these things together. And then you're going to have like a final score. OK? And then again, let's say, I don't know, um, one has a really high score, then not so high, not so high, and so on. The one, in theory, the one with the high score should win, right? So whatever score this option gets, then they, uh, they, this, this, this basically becomes the winner. And then you go ahead and choose that specific vendor, for example, in this case. Now, obviously, this is a bit of an oversimplification. This is, there's, there's more nuances to, it, to this. There's more details to this involved. Uh, but this is something that I would actually strongly encourage you to do whenever you're doing any type of trait study. So any type of time, like let's say you're even, even if you're building your own personal project, and let's say, I don't know, you want to go build a microcontroller, or you want to build an Arduino board that turns into an alarm clock uh, at night and a light bulb during the day or something. I don't know, like something. And you want to figure out, OK, like, uh, should I get an Arduino or should I get a knockoff? Um, should I, I don't know, like uh, get a resistor kit or just like buy individual resistors? And then you can add variables such as like cost, time involved, ease of use, reliability, blah, blah. 
And even though that may sound like it's a little bit overkill for like a personal project, it can actually be a really good practice for how you can be systematic in your decision making and how you can make uh, decisions based on data and not just based on intuition. Now, I do want to add one last piece, which is actually about intuition. Now, again, this is like very, very important type of framework when you're making business decisions or engineering decisions, projects related decisions. But I would argue like when it, so, so this works really well like with kind of machines or systematic like ways, ways of thinking. But when it comes to personal life, we are humans. And there's like an added complexity to being human. And that like being human, things are not always logical, right? Like we still have an emotional part. We have a spiritual part. We have some elements to us uh, that kind of uh, get involved in how we make decisions that may or may not be explainable. So for that, I would still encourage you to adopt a method like this. For example, I don't know, you're trying to like marry someone or you're trying to pick a career or you're trying to do something that is irreversible, that has very long-term consequences to your life. Uh, you, can, you can go ahead and think of it systematically. You can make a list of pros and cons. You can make uh, some type of trait study. But at the end of the day, because you are a human, uh, at, the, at the result of that, even though you may get a logical answer, at the end of the day, you're going to have a feeling. You're going to have an intuition of, of like something that pulls you, that like tells you, hey, no, I think you should actually do that. I think that thing t tends to make more sense. And intuition and logic are not antithetical. They're not two separate things. They're not uh, opposing things. I actually think they go hand in hand. I think when you are presented with data and you understand the data very well and you understand reality very, very well, then your intuition is going to be better calibrated and you'll be able to go ahead and make uh, really accurate decisions in your life. But again, this is kind of a little off topic, more, more of like, I just want to make sure you don't take this to the extreme and apply this in every single area in your personal life and you make some decisions that you regret and you're like, oh, but Ali told me I need to like make a decision matrix for everything. Uh, that's definitely not how I operate. Uh, in my personal life, especially for quicker decisions, I'm more of a gut feeling person. But when it comes to work and if I'm spending money on antennas or electronics or anything of that nature, then I'm definitely using this approach such that I can even justify to other people. When, when people ask you, why did you pick this antenna? Or why did you pick this radio? Or why did you choose this vendor? Then you can just show them this and that pretty much becomes your answer. Now again, if you're someone who is very interested in learning how to understand systems, think in systematic ways, make systematic decisions, things of that nature, I'm gonna go ahead and put a video over here that is gonna talk to you about systems thinking and systems engineering and how to build systems in your life and how to build systems in your engineering career. So yeah, just go ahead and watch it. I'll see you over there. Peace, love.